show. I love this big crowd. Now, and, oh, I tell you, everyone, it has been a great week for those of us who enjoy first-class luxury air travel all around the world. <laughs> Just me. It's an alienate crowd. Have you all been on a plane? <laughs> but we've bonded again. Yes, uh, the world's first super jumbo, right? It can hold up to 900 people, has been delivered to Singapore Airlines. Now, it's very eco friendly using less fuel than a 747, and apparently it's really safe. Well, unless you happen to be standing on the spot where the block of 900 people's frozen piss lands. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> really pissed to death. <laughs> but but uh, what really caught my eye, what really caught up, <laughs> I wonder if you could smell it coming. I'm not sure. <laughs> you could even, what's that smell? <laughs> <laughs> this really caught my eye, though. It comes with double bedrooms. Isn't that amazing? I imagine that woman comes with a room as well. <laughs> Would sir like a moist vagina? <laughs> Do be careful, sir, it's hot. <laughs> come on! We have a double bed on a plane. It's basically the invitation to say, come and have sex on this flight. You know, it won't be long before the stewardesses are saying, uh, you can enter your partner here, here. <laughs> Do remember the nearest entrance may be behind you. Just <laughs> let the guests on. They are in the show. We have the latest single from the Backstreet Boys. But first, it's a star of usual suspects. Willow's crossing at end of days. Can you feel the burn? It's Gabriel Byrne, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, sir. Hello, Graham. Hello. Where do we sit? Where do we sit? Now you've got them out, you can't stop. I can't, yeah, I've got legs. You yeah. do, and you know how to use them. Gabriel, <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you fly over posh? Like in the... Like Up that, class. The, that, like, this is the cabin on that new plane. You know, oh, yes, I did. I flew directly from New York to London, and uh, there was a guy beside me who decided to break the ice by saying to me, are, are you going to London? This was halfway over the Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm bailing out over Greenland, so I'll be saying <laughs> Yes, I did fly posh class, yeah. But that looks really posh, though. Oh, is that a plane? Yeah, it's a plane. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. doctored your hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, talking of your hotel room last night, mm. uh, you were up late, apparently, with the jet well, lag. Well, I wasn't up late. I was actually jet lagged, and I'd fallen asleep in a coma at about uh, <laughs> 10 o'clock, and uh, I. I thought I'd been asleep for about several days and I woke up and I was wide awake, it was about three o'clock in the morning, I was, I was reading Eric Clapton's uh, book, you know, the, bio the Good autobiography. Idea. Yes. And he, <laughs> and he, <laughs> that's, that's no reflection on the book. <laughs> uh, I was trying to get back to sleep. And, and, um, <laughs> That's actually a good book. And he was just getting to the part about Paddy Boyd, which was the interesting part. And um, <laughs> the doorknob turned. And um, there's a guy I've never seen before taking off his tie saying, Oh, Jesus! <laughs> and I think, well, either I'm in the wrong bed uh, or this guy's in the wrong room. <laughs> anyway, it, 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 well, he left. Because I, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I hadn't left my door open optimistically, you have to understand. <laughs> it, it, it was a jet lag amnesiac kind of... Uh, it could have happened to anyone. Anyway. I mean, it happened to, the, it happened to the Queen. That she, old chestnut. She, she did. Yeah. She had the man on the end of her bed. A guy called Michael Fagan, I believe. Good trivia. Very good. Very good. Pub quite quiz. Impressive. Honestly, get him. <laughs> uh, didn't he offer, uh, offer her a, a fag, a Where cigarette? <laughs> He, 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 he,
He might have. There's a lot of them in the palace. <laughs> Show. It is vile. No, let's talk about let's talk about uh, Strictly Come Dancing. Yeah, let's. No, because it is this year. It is fabulous. Now you've just got it, so you haven't seen it. It's on uh, Saturdays you've and Sundays. You've been my villain. But it, oh, you, have you seen the American one, The Dancing with the Stars? Uh, no. No. Right. <laughs> you should have been alive then, weren't you? Yeah. But are you enjoying it? I am. Yeah. I mean, being in the dance off last weekend was a bit hairy. <laughs> Why did that happen? Why? Well, I just don't think I pulled it off very well, did I, really? I thought it was And really I was dreaming Grumber Arms for four weeks, but it... You know, but they... You know, the standard's quite high, I think, this year, especially with the girls, you know. Is, so. is, a, little picture, is a little picture of you in action? Oh. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> you can almost see your special cha are like... there. I... <laughs> you got me half mouth. <laughs> Those are my knickers. That's no, because so there were some quite, um... The... Full-on shots, were well, there? Yes! There was one, but on the Sunday night, on the Sunday night, there was one where you, you, because I was very impressed, leg up, whoa, but the camera was just, you know. Right in there, was they? <laughs> Sunday tea time, I Forrest of Dean. I should have written, vote for me on it. <laughs> I was Deborah Payne, vote for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and how are you getting on with Darren? Great, yeah, yeah, good. Because, also, Darren has done... Does this frighten you when Darren oh, does these... Oh, God, these shots you've got of me, they're just good <laughs> This week, and you are absolutely crushing it. No, but is oh, it, it's is cruel, it, is it so. scary though? That scary. All right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. Something else. There you go. It's evil, isn't it? But is it scary? Absolutely. It's the most terrifying thing I've ever done in my entire life. Yeah, it is terrifying. But now, uh, listen, talking of the, the lifts and things, right? <laughs> there is, no, there is a sports craze uh, sweeping the globe. You may have seen this. Uh, it's called wife carrying. Right. And uh, uh, this is. <laughs> it is a serious sport, right? Oh. It, was, it was invented in Finland. I'll tell you, the nights really are long there. <laughs> now, some people say it's slightly demeaning for the women, though, to be honest, no one comes out of it very well. <laughs> Because the diet before a race is very important. Uh, the men have to eat uh, lots of carbohydrates and are totally banned from eating beans. Look at that! Look this is. Look at that. They found 32 couples willing to do this. <laughs> Minimum. How are the positions decided on? I don't know. It's a Finnish thing. Because if it was the other way around, it could be something else. You know? <laughs> And the number wouldn't be 32. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, apparently it's not that hard. So uh, I thought I'd have a go. Um, now, I was looking at people earlier. Oh, there's, see now, she looks small to me. So, uh, lady in green. <laughs> Come on. Are you willing? You're not with, Are you wearing pants and things? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, come here. Come here. Come here. Okay, you bunch up there, bunch up, okay. bunch up, bunch up. Okay, now, if you get down, if you bend over... I'll help you out. No, we'll just check and make sure everything's... Just check! Hang on, hang on. Okay, so, let me get in. Hang on. <laughs> My dog's going to be all over me tonight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> got a lady present, I'll remind you. Yes, and now, actually, and a lady who... The weird thing is, because... <laughs> how weird was it? Because what you were... Was it 14 when you went into the centres the first time? 15. 15. Yeah. But essentially, you, you went through kind of adolescence, all that really mm -hmm. difficult time. 
on telly. Was oh, that absolutely, yeah. And also going in at 15 years old. And then I was actually playing down. I was playing 13. And so, did that mess with your head, do you think? Oh, yeah. In what way? <laughs> well, you know, I was trying to grow up, you know what I mean? I was having to play down, so that was quite, you know, a difficult thing to do. But it was the way it was. Got Odd question. And uh, what are you going to come back? We we'll never say never. I don't know where Sharon is at the moment. I think she's had a baby, hasn't she, called Dennis the Third. <laughs> and I think One she's working in Hooters <laughs> in America. You're working in Hooters in America? I think she's working in Hooters. Oh. That's what I've decided. <laughs> 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 this is a spin-off series there. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, Gabriel, now, you have had so many odd jobs. It's extraordinary. Uh, what were you? you? You've been a morgue attendant? Mm-hmm. Uh, you've, be, you've been an encyclopedia salesman. I thought you were going to say psychiatric hospital. <laughs> well, did you do that as well? <laughs> 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 and you were a barman in a gay bar. Yes, I was. No, but is it true you didn't know it was a gay bar? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I, I, I was quite, I was, I was quite, I, I, I wasn't as advanced in years as I am now, but I was kind of young at the time, and in Dublin at that time, th there were no homosexuals, as you know. But, yes. Um, <laughs> it's true. I looked. Yeah, I, my name is uh, Gabriel, and in Ireland at that time, they used to shorten it to gay. Uh, I know, weird. <laughs> and, uh, so this guy came in one day and he said to me, uh, can I ask you a question, are you gay? And I said, yeah. <laughs> I thought he was ordering a drink. He was actually inquiring about my future prospects. <laughs> uh, now, I have, to, have you ever been a door fitter? A what? A door fitter. A fitter of doors. Oh, I thought, I thought you said a dwarf fitter. <laughs> I don't mean to cause any offence no. to people. Uh, but that's why the, no, a door fitter, no. No, because, I have to say, the life of a door fitter can be full of incident. Did anyone see this story now? Uh, yes. This is, this is a story about a man called Mark Chapman, right? He's a carpenter, door fitter, and had his business number printed in the yellow pages under a gay advice advert, right? <laughs> and in fact, uh, Mark's here tonight. Hello, Mark. Hi. So, you started getting, your phone number was in the wrong bit or, or the wrong phone number? They, um, they printed the, the phone number wrong. But that number used to be the Medway Gay and Lesbian Helpline. And apparently, to even more confusion, I'm now calling you the wrong name. You You're actually called Mark Graham. Absolutely. But if I'm nice, I don't didn't mind. bother to tell me that either. <laughs> I thought you were doing me a favour. No. <laughs> He's got the name wrong, I'll go with it. <laughs> People bring up for gay advice. Oh, well, it's not door fitting, <laughs> but I'll try. <laughs> uh, what a nice person you are. So what sort of things were people asking you? Um, I had two um, German guys phone me up once. Uh, got my number out for Gay Contact magazine. Um, asking about the gay scene in Medway, so just chatted about that really. The gay scene yeah. in Medway? Yeah. Imagine that's quite a short chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that long, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, sure. And is there, I mean, did you know, I mean, how many, because this went on for a long time, didn't it? Seven years. <laughs> Seven years. <laughs>